1 Peter chapter 3. And it's, you know, it's usually these days, it's that last one that really stings. Obedient to their own husbands. Because that is not the way that women in America are being raised at all. It is very, very, very rare that you're going to find a woman, be, a, a young girl being brought up and saying, you know what, when you get married, you need to obey your husband. And, you know, one of the reasons why they're not doing it anyways is because they see what's happening in their own family. Where the, where the wife is, is leading everything. The wife is ruling the household. So they don't even have the example to follow, let alone they're being inundated with the world, with society saying, no, the, the modern feminist movement, everything is equal. That there is no real authority in the home because it's 50-50. I'll tell you what, that doesn't work very well. I mean, it's just kind of a stupid plan to begin with because... What, I mean, everything's great as long as you agree, right? What happens when you disagree? What happens? Do you just fight it out until, until someone just finally gives in? Instead of actually having an established authority of saying, no, this is where the buck stops here. At the end of the day, you don't have to agree. And here's the thing, wives. You know, here, this might save you a lot of, a lot of frustration and, and, um, and a lot of arguments, a lot of fights. If you're married to a man, if you're, if you're married, you may be right about something. But if your husband says, this is the way things are going to be, he's the one that's in charge, and you need to swallow your pride and, and be in subjection to your husband. It say, it'll save a lot of fights. It's not about right and wrong all the time. It's about being in the position that God put you in. Now, it doesn't mean you can't talk to your husbands and, uh, and the husbands can't listen to their wives, obviously. But at the end of the day, when a decision needs to be made, there's an authority figure in place that God has placed there and it's the husband. And we're going to see again in 1 Peter chapter 3, the same rule being set forth of wives being obedient to their own husbands. Verse number 1, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Look at the similarities between that we just saw in Titus with 1 Peter 3. Be in subjection to your own husbands. And now it's talking about people who do not obey the word. They don't obey the word of God. They may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now that word conversation isn't just talking about the things that you say. It's talking about the way that you present yourself. It's the way that you, that you live. That is the, a, a, the full meaning of the word conversation. It's a, you know, it's a little bit, the, the, the meaning has changed slightly in our, in our modern vernacular, but back in the, you know, 400 years ago when the, when the Bible was translated in English, conversation had a more full meaning that, that involved a lot more than just, just your, your speech and the things that you say. It was, it was your whole conversation is your manner of being. So this is explaining that, look, if you are going to be a good godly example in showing, hey, I'm in subjection to my own husband, I'm not blaspheming the word of God because the word of God's very clear on this subject that the husband's in charge. I'm going to show my faith. I'm going to show that, you know what, I believe this book so much that, I, that, that I'm going to live the way that this book says I ought to live, and the way that when you do that, it says, if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold, so the people who are disobedient, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not saved, it's just people who are not obeying the word, right? Other, you might have other believers, other women that are believers. They're Christians. But they see, wow, look at this example, this chaste example of a woman who is subject to her own husband, being convinced and won over and saying, oh, well, if she can do it, and this is a good example of someone who believes the Bible, I can do that too. 